Today we're going to be making over this plain, simple jewelry box. It's not horrible, but it doesn't have any wow The first step in either. this process Here's is to our remove our assist. hardware. I use a small screwdriver and just remove each of the handles from the jewelry armoire. I always place my hardware into a dedicated dish. This way no pieces get lost, especially when I'm working with small hardware like this. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clean my piece. I'm using um, Dixie Belle White Lightning mixed into a spray bottle. White Lightning is a granulated formula that you mix with water, directions are on the container, and then you can reuse it over and over in a spray bottle. Once you clean well, you want to make sure you rinse with water just to remove any cleaning residue. On this piece, I am going to be using Dixie Belle Slick Stick Primer. Slick Stick is a gripping primer made for painting over slick surfaces like glass, plastic, and laminate. This piece is solid wood, but it does have a really glossy finish, so I'm going to go ahead and use the Slick Stick. Another alternative would be to go ahead and scuff sand this before painting, but Slick Stick was just easier in this case. The Slick Stick also served to camouflage the dark wood because my finish is in lighter colors. I'm going to go ahead and use this white base to my advantage. Slick Stick is a water-based primer, and so I can brush it on using my good Dixie Belle brushes, knowing that I can rinse them out easily with soap and water cleanup. This is the Dixie Belle Mini. I brush it on in clean, even strokes, making sure to go all the way across the front without stopping in between. Then I'm going to turn my drawer onto its side and go ahead and hit these drawer edges and make sure they're primed as well. With two coats of primer on, we're ready to lay on some paint. I'm gonna be doing two blended coats of Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray, Tea Rose, Pink Champagne, and Fluff. Okay, we're back with our jewelry armoire project and I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna go from here next. So we did all of our prep on this piece um, and what that included so far is a, I removed all my hardware. I gave it a good cleaning with Dixie Belle White Lightning. I rinsed that with water and now I've got two coats of Dixie Belle Slick Stick on my piece. And what I do from here is I take one of the Dixie Belle sanding sponges, which looks like this. This is a 220 grit sanding sponge. And I'm just gonna do a light brushing. I don't even call this sanding because I'm just gonna go a single pass over my entire piece. And that just knocks down any little areas. Like here's one right here. I've got a little piece of dust that kind of settled into my slick stick and it just knocks down little spots like that and makes it smooth. And then I'm going to take just a rag and I'm going to use it like a tap, tack cloth. Um, just get it damp and I'm just going to remove all that dust. I don't want to add any paint over dust. There's no point in, in sanding and then painting over my dust. Okay, and the um, color scheme I have planned for this is a blush and gray combo that's just absolutely beautiful. So I'm starting out and I'm using Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray is my gray. And then I've got Dixie Belle Tea Rose, Pink Champagne, and Fluff. So what my color combination looks like is it looks kind of like this here. Okay. Um, only on this one, I'm going to start with my darker colors at the top, and I'm going to kind of bring it down. Only I want a little bit of an asymmetrical look. Um, so I'm going to bring the gray down a little bit further on this side, and it'll be a little bit up higher here, and it'll just kind of uh, wave as I go around the piece. So I'm going to use my Dixie Belle Mini, which is my favorite brush for laying paint on. I'm going to start out with my Hurricane Gray. Now, I don't expect to get full coverage in this coat. This is my first coat. This is where I conceptualize a lot of my finishes. Um, I've unscrewed this top, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off so it's not in my way. Um, but I'm just conceptualizing my finish at this point, seeing how I like my colors, how does my layout work, and I'm gonna go ahead and brush this off.
this one here and I can look at the front of this piece and see that tea rose is the color that's running along the top of the front of this. So I'm just going to take my tea rose paint. Um, I hit it with the sides of my bristles. So I'm just going to hit it with the sides like this here. I'm just going to cover up that primer that I've got on here and then I come along and do the sides of my drawer as well. You can tape these off if you want. Um, if I get any paint on parts that I don't want, I come back and I clean those off afterwards. Right, and I also get around my frame. Okay, right on this little inside lip here. All right, so I will do that with each drawer and that will give me a finished first coat. So we're gonna come back and um, I will let this dry overnight, so for 24 hours, and we will come back and we will per perfect this. All right, we're back. We got a first coat on our jewelry arm one, and now I'm here because I'm gonna put the second coat on. So what I do in between every coat, I'm back with my sanding sponge again. These are the 220 grit um, sanding sponges from Dixie Bell, and I just take and I lightly brush my piece. I don't even tell people I sand because it's just a brushing. And then I just take a damp rag and I tack off all my dust. Okay, and now we're ready for our second coat. Now, um, sometimes when I'm blending, I will tend to um, reverse my order. So the last time we started at our dark color at the top and worked our way down, I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up this time. And that just helps me get my um, colors a little bit more even. I find if I alternate, so I'm gonna start with a little bit of water this time. Um, when, when I'm painting over a first coat, it's got a little bit of bite to it. And so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of water just to help lubricate my surface. I have enough coverage in my paint. Um, I just want my brush to glide a little bit easier. I'm gonna make sure on this coat that I keep my brush strokes nice and smooth and long and linear. This is my Dixie Belle Fluff, which is my first color on, my, on this piece. I'm gonna make sure I'm getting into all my crevices. A little bit of water also helps the paint fall into those low points and find the crevices for you. Because this is a water-based paint, it's friendly to water. So this is our second coat of paint. This is where I really perfect my paint finish. So any of the flaws that I saw after my first coat, I'm gonna fix those now. All right, my second color on this one is Dixie Belle Pink Champagne. And same thing, I start off with a little bit of water on my surface. And I'm gonna brush that right into my fluff. Now, this is a really easy blend. The co closer in color your, um, closer in tone your colors are, the easier they are to blend. The pink champagne is so close to fluff already that it makes them really easy to brush together. It's just a very, very subtle shade of pink. Make sure I'm getting in here on all this fluting. Again, I will take out my drawers and do along the edges of my drawers. Now I'm gonna come in with my Dixie Belle Tea Rose. A Little bit of water, and I'm gonna brush my Tea Rose on there. I'm using a horizontal brush stroke and then I'm coming back and just taking that vertical as well. Just grabbed a little more paint. And I'm gonna start brushing that right down into my pink champagne. And I want a nice large overlap between these two colors. So I'm carrying it all the way from this drawer to about this one here, which is an overlap between the two because I don't want it to look like I've got a stripe. That's my pet peeve, guys. And I brushed it vertical, and now I'm gonna come back horizontal, and that just helps me smooth out those brush strokes. If I feel my brush start sticking, that means I need to grab a little bit of water. Same thing over here. Now this is kind of an asymmetrical look, so I'm not trying to keep a straight line across my piece where my colors meet up. I'm gonna get into my moldings here. If I feel like I've gone too heavy, I will come back with my brush from my um, pink champagne and I'm just gonna smooth out that section right there. A little bit of water because my paint's starting to set up. I'm 
And I'm really going to make this a nice soft blend between these pinks. Carrying it down a little further on this side, it's going to come up a little bit over here, but let's come back with my tea rose. And I'm going to bring this up. Now the tea rose into, we have um, Hurricane Gray at the top. That's the toughest blend on this piece. Otherwise, these pinks are really, really, really easy to brush together. All right, I'm make sure to get my moldings here. And then on this side, I'm gonna turn my piece a little bit and I wanna make sure I give myself a nice, this is my brush for my pink champagne, which is my lighter color. And I'm just brushing that up nice and high. So it came down a little bit lower here. I'm gonna let it come up a little bit higher on this side. bit of fluff down at the bottom just because I got a little bit of pink down there and I want to keep my white down here nice and fresh and pure so I just touch that up with a little bit of fluff same thing on that side all right and we worked our way up to the top now where I'm ready to work this gray into the pink which is my more challenging blend so I'm going to come in with a little bit of my hurricane gray I'm just going to give myself some coverage up here I can still see a little bit of my white underneath that paint I'm just gonna brush on some coverage and then I will go ahead and start working these two colors together. I'm gonna let my gray fall a little bit lower here and I'm gonna do the same thing, a nice long brushing into each other. So it's a really soft transition. The longer that is, the less harsh the line will be between the two colors. My brush for my tea rose. I pulled my gray down. Now I'm going to pull my tea rose back up. I'm going to give myself a little bit of tea rose to work into right here. Just freshening up my paint so that when I come to bring that gray into it, it's nice, fresh, workable paint. All right, let's start brushing these together. So this is my same brush from my gray and I'm just gonna start overlapping these two colors. I'm gonna come in here and vertically brush them together. And then I can horizontally brush them together and it smooths out those brush strokes. Okay, let's come back with my T-Rose and bring that up a little bit higher. I want a really nice soft, I'm almost mixing the colors on my piece. You can see how this drawer right here has sort of become um, a mixture of what T-Rose and her cream gray would look like. I've created that mixture on my piece. And if I've got that mixture, that's how I know that I've got a nice, soft, smooth blend on my piece too. All right, and I'm gonna grab a little bit more hurricane gray. I want to make sure my top stays nice and dark so you can tell that that was gray and it has faded out. I don't want my colors to get too muddy. Give myself a little bit of water because my brush is starting to stick a little bit. All right, and my brush for my tea rose. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this fluting detail right here. And how does that look? All right, I'll turn this a little bit so you can see it. So that is our full blend from Hurricane Gray to Tea Rose, Pink Champagne, and into Fluff. We will come back and we're gonna decorate this piece. <music>
Okay, we're back with a finished paint product, and now I'm going to be coming around with some of the new Dixie Belle silk screen stencils and decorating the front of this piece. Screen stencils are lightly adhesive, and they are printed with a silk screen. So when you stencil them, they come out with the most clean, crisp lines. I'm just using some filigree and a gold paste with a silicone spatula tool to lightly stencil some detail on the front of this piece. I know you can't see up close, but you'll see in the final pics that when I peel this stencil away, the detail on this is incredible. The next step in this process is to add a decor transfer. I'm using the Lush Floral Transfer by Redesign with Prima to add this bold, bright floral to the front of my piece. I start by cutting out the piece that I want to use and then slicing it with a razor blade to fit my drawer fronts. As always, a link of where to find all the products I'm using on this piece is available in the description on this post. Once I've laid out my transfer, I use the rubbing stick that comes with the transfer to rub it onto the front of my drawers. Here's an up-close photo so you can see what the transfer and the silk screen stencils look like when they're complete. I'm also going to take one of my silk screen stencils and use it to add this flower detail to the top of this jewelry armoire. I'm using the same spatula tool and Dixie Belle fluff and rubbing it over the top of the silk screen stencil. Like I said, it's lightly adhesive so it lays nice and flat and doesn't move as, as I'm scraping it. What I'm doing as I work the paint over the top of the stencil is I'm using the spatula tool to work the paint into the small holes that are in the screen of the silk. I want to make sure that I get even coverage and you can tell by looking at it that it's gone into all the holes of the screen. This ensures that I'm not going to have any blank or missed spots on my stencil. You can use these silk screens with the Dixie Belle paint, you can use them with the Dixie Belle gilding waxes, and they also work nice with some of the Dixie Belle mousse. Once you're done using your silk screen stencils, you want to make sure you get them into water right away. If the paint starts to set up, it can block the little holes in the silk screen and be more difficult to wash away. I recommend just having a little bowl of water next to you if you're going to be using them, and that way you can just dip it into water as soon as you're done. The silk screen stencils currently come in seven different designs. Each design has three pieces in the package, so you get plenty of variety with each one. I'm using a combination of the floral and mosaic design on this piece. When you pull the stencil away is where you really get to see the magic happen. You get these clean, crisp details with silk screen stencils that you can't get with anything else. Do you see how awesome that floral is? And check out this up close picture. You can see how fine that silk screen really gets your stencil. The next step on this piece is to add some bold gold stripes to the sides. I'm going to start by using one and a half inch blue painters tape to tape off my stripes. You'll notice I run it from top to bottom and then I'm going to pull off small pieces of my tape and use those as spacers in the space in between. On this long of a length I want to make sure that I use two spacers so that I get a nice straight line with my next piece of tape. Let's continue taping off the rest of this side. Once all my tape stripes are down, I'm going to run my fingers along the edges of the tape to make sure they're nice and attached with no raised pieces. In this case, I'm going to be filling in my stripes using Dixie Belle Mousse. It's a thicker product than regular paint, so I'm not really worried about bleed through underneath my tape. I'm continuing the process using the same spacers in between each tape line, and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap my tape around the upper edge of this door so that my stripes continue up along the top. Stripes are a really easy way that you can add a bold accent to any furniture piece. Once my stripes were all taped off, I used Dixie Belle Gemstone Mousse in Golden Gem and the flat small brush to just brush in some mousse into my stripe pattern. Peeling off the tape is really where the magic happens. Look at how bold and fun these stripes are with the blended finish peeking out from behind. Right, you guys we've got our silk screen stencils on our transfer and our gold stripes along the sides and now we're going to put some finishing touches on I use black wax to some degree on just about every piece I do I'm using my Dixie Belle besting wax in black and a small artist brush and just running some black into the crevices on the fluting on this piece and then I'm going to come back with my Dixie Belle golden gem mousse and I'm going to paint in some nice rich saturated stripes on some of the edges of this piece 
The mousse was perfect in this case because it gets nice, rich, saturated coverage in just one coat. So with a small artist brush, I can really bring out some of the moldings on this very easily. We're getting close, you guys. With all these final details done, here's what the piece looks like. Now it's ready for clear coat. I usually always spray my clear coats. It's the best way to get a flawless finish with any of the Dixie Belle clear coats. In this case, I'm spraying Dixie Belle Gator Hide. With my sprayer, it doesn't require any dilution. I do have several videos on spraying on my YouTube channel if you're interested in learning more about the process. For this piece, I used two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide around the body and the top using my Husky spray gun attached to a compressor. With all of these details done, this piece is ready to go home and enjoy. If you like this video, I hope you'll click the subscribe button and find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest as well.